Hey there, Central Ohio. I'm 10 Weather Impact meteorologist Michael Barons. And I'm meteorologist Aaron White. And it's uh, been a day, well, kind of a week of <laughs> cool and wet weather. Yeah. Not ideal. <laughs> Not really ideal. I mean, last night we got the rain out of here just in time. You and I were at the, the Clippers yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. It ended up being perfect for mm -hmm. that but you really only had a tiny window yesterday to get out to enjoy the sun. Yeah, really just in the evening and then we got uh, some more clouds came in and of course this morning we had some fog across the area. Yeah, so pretty check wild. out this video here that you got this downtown yeah. earlier today. Those yeah. low clouds kind of shrouding the buildings. There. Yeah, I stepped outside. I was going to grab some coffee and I looked up. I'm like, yeah, you can hardly see the tops of the buildings. So <laughs> made for a cool sight. Yeah, and I bet we're going to see at least some more fog in the days ahead as those temperatures really start to fall. In fact, today really going to be the last mild temperature day that we have across central Ohio before our really kind of unseasonably cool weather pattern kicks in, we do have another chance for showers and storms as we head throughout this afternoon and into this evening, and then we set up a chilly uh, rest of the week. Temperatures are really going to drop as we head toward the end of this week. We even have high temperatures that will really not even make it out of the 50s in the days ahead, so get ready for those cooler temperatures. As we head through today, we are not really expecting severe weather, but we have a chance for it. The good news is everything this afternoon will remain in the low category, though we're going to keep a close eye on any of those storms if any get gusty. Of course, we'll have all the details here on 10 TV plus and on TV at 10 TV. You can always follow us on 10 TV.com for the latest and have that 10 TV app on your phone to get any weather alerts as soon as they're issued. As far as what we are looking at heading through the midday, it was bright but pretty hazy, pretty cloudy outside across the region. Those temperatures were slowly making their way up the morning. Not all that cool. We got down to around the upper 50s for most of central Ohio, a little bit sticky out there as well. As we headed into the afternoon, those dew points were up into the low 60s for a number of spots, even as high as about 64 down in MacArthur. A little bit lower humidity to the north, but not by much. It's really going to be kind of a sticky afternoon, or at least you'll feel the mugginess in the air as you step outside throughout the day today. Over the next 12 hours, we'll see the chance for showers and storms push through the region through today and into tonight. We're going to kind of keep this rain kind of lingering around at least a little bit as we head toward the weekend. Those temperatures out there pushing their way into the upper 60s for highs this afternoon and then dropping as we head through the coming days. So get ready for that cooler air to push in. Here's a look at the weather system that's causing the rain and storms to come through. You can see that line of showers working this way across central Ohio heading through the midday. A lot of spin in this atmosphere. So I mean, if you see an isolated funnel out there, it's a possibility uh, with all this spin in the air, but again, severe weather risks today are low, but we will keep a close eye on that as we head throughout the afternoon. Here's your hour by hour forecast showers and storms racing through the region as we work our way through the afternoon hours. Again, we keep those chances around as we head into this evening as well. You can see that rain pushing across the region as we head into tonight. Those scattered showers continuing even as we head past midnight and into Thursday morning. We'll keep those rain chances around as we head through the day tomorrow. You should keep the umbrella around as well well, which is kind of this damp pattern, much cooler pattern heading in as we head through the day tomorrow. Watch the storm motion here. You see that rain coming in from the northwest down to the southeast. That's going to follow the wind as well. So we'll be on a much cooler path as we head toward tomorrow. And again, we could see some of that rain even linger toward the end of the week, though things should largely be drying as we work our way toward the Memorial Day weekend. Here's a look at the next seven days rain chances. They'll be highest today and into tomorrow. They're dropping pretty fast as we head toward the weekend. Sunday looking like the best day after the lowest chance for rain. Unfortunately, as we head toward Memorial Day and early next week, we could see another chance for a little bit of precipitation here in central Ohio. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that as we head toward the holiday weekend. Here's a look at your 10 weather impact seven day forecast. Again, shower and storm chances out there today. Temperatures will be up close to 70 for this afternoon and then big dip as we head toward tomorrow. 57 six the high out there. Those temperatures really not going to be all that warm. I think that's the wrong temperature that map there. Uh, the one I'm looking for, I think I put back under Wednesday, even though this is for tomorrow. 56 degrees what we're looking at tomorrow afternoon. It is going to be a stark difference from today. Again, we're dropping by more than 10 degrees between now and tomorrow. So get ready for that blast of colder air to head our way. It's really going to feel more like early spring as we head toward tomorrow. And then the long term pattern here, even as we get beyond the 
the seven day. And you see we're back up to the 70s by Tuesday. We're kind of still centered below average on the next 8 to 14. And in terms of precipitation, yeah, about 50 50 uh, where we should be for this time of the year. But more importantly, those temperatures likely to continue to trend cooler even after we get back up to the 70s next week. Kind of a interesting pattern we find ourselves in here heading toward Memorial Day. It's usually kind of a pretty toasty time of the year, but yeah, not really seeing it this year. Yeah, not seeing it this time around, and it's kind of been locked into uh, just these, uh, you know, these cutoff lows as we call them, where yeah. it just kind of get locked into this pattern of cloudy, cool, wet weather. So not really ideal, but yeah, that's I mean, where we're at. <laughs> the, thankfully, this one uh, not quite as energetic as the last time we got caught under sure. one of these lows. Uh, you remember a couple weeks ago we had days and days of severe weather yeah. this time a little gloomy but yep. not packing quite as much of a punch yeah definitely good news uh in terms of that uh, but what we're not really seeing of course is like you said that heat that yeah. we normally would see this time of year and it's actually interesting because uh, this week is heat safety awareness week <laughs> nationally and some places are dealing with the heat just not so much around here but still it's good to talk about some of those heat safety <laughs> tips and some of the dangers that we get here around ohio and across much of you know the united states states, especially as we go into the summer months when we get those temperatures up into the 90s and even potentially triple digit heat. So just some things to keep in mind. Of course, if you are going to be outside, just know the signs, know the symptoms of those heat dangers. When we talk about being exhausted from the heat, if you start to see, uh, feel some cramps, if you start feeling faint or dizzy, and of course, any signs of heat stroke when you have that red hot dry skin, a throbbing headache, uh, that's when you want to make sure you uh, call 911 in case you are experiencing some of those symptoms as we get into those hot and more so humid months when we see those temperatures again up into the 90s, triple digit heat and the heat index values well over 100. That happens at least uh, several times throughout the summer months. So make sure to find some shade. Of course, stay hydrated. That's the biggest thing that you can do. Get a nice uh, cool glass of water. Stay hydrated. Avoid the alcohol. Just uh, stay, you know, drink plenty of water. Drink the fluid. Stay in the shade. Stay in the AC, of course, when you can. And this week, uh, you know, not having to worry about turning on the AC. Maybe uh, the heaters are maybe getting well, returned on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past somebody to, to have the heat on when the temperatures drop into the 50s for highs and yeah. 40s for lows. You're going to see people walking around in some eh, pretty thick layers here yeah. in the next couple of days. Hey, I broke out the flannel today. I mean, it's going to be warmer this afternoon, but, you know, tomorrow <laughs> maybe another day for uh, flannel weather. <laughs> oh, tomorrow definitely going to be a day for flannel weather. But, you know, those heat concerns, we, we may not need those tips now, but we're going to need them in a couple weeks. We can only stay this cool for so long. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's May. It's already getting towards the end of May by June, July. And, of course, August, we all know we're going to have some of that heat. Absolutely. Count, it on, count on it every year. Another story we've been following. It's been a pretty active week for severe storms around the country with scenes like these playing out from Alabama to Tennessee and back west toward Oklahoma and Colorado. You can see a couple tornadoes there and some of the damage that they've caused. Those videos certainly impressive, but surprisingly, they actually fall short of a weather event we haven't seen in the U.S. since 2013. Yeah, just wild seeing some of those, you know, you know, those severe weather videos and stuff. We had, we had several tornadoes and now we are in the peak, of course, of tornado season and the most powerful EF5 we haven't seen since the 2013 tornado. That was 12 years ago today. It devastated more Oklahoma, killing 24 people. Yeah, it's amazing to think it's been so long since that tornado has gone through. But for survivors, you know, life would never be the same after that tornado. Among them, a child who decided to dedicate her life to saving others. Dave Malkoff has her story. My homeroom was across the hall, but this- Aria Vargas just had her 20th birthday. A young life shaped by a powerful storm. I wanna show you this that I had printed out. This is crazy. I've actually never seen this. And I was right there. Aria seemed like the right choice to help us understand exactly what happened in Moore, Oklahoma a dozen years ago. She's studying why there's still a constant threat both inside and outside of Tornado Alley. With that hook right there, you have this little swath that's a hail core. Since she grew up in Moore schools. Howdy, everyone. Howdy. 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 And is an aspiring meteorologist at Texas A&M University. And it is turning into a huge tornado. And one more reason. Hey. 
when the tornado struck Briarwood Elementary in 2013, Aria was somewhere in here. Inside this giant ball of destruction, there was eight-year-old me. In fact, this is a photo of Aria's rescue. Oh, that clock showed what time the tornado hit at. At 3.18 p.m. I live four houses down right there. Aria's two sisters, four-year-old Karina and seven-month-old Sydney, were killed when the tornado flattened their house. This bench in the school's playground serves as a memorial to Karina. After being told that I had lost my sisters, it was just a blur. There are reminders of her sisters on the walls at their home and one she keeps near her heart. Um, this locket has part of my sister's ashes in it. If I'm sad and I have just an emotional day, I tend to think about them. She shared with us letters she wrote to her sisters. I hate that you left. I hate that she left everybody. I hate that you're never coming back. And I hate that I have to realize that. This writing this definitely helped get it out as well. This young girl who lost her sisters and survived a tornado has grown up to chase them. Potentially where tornadoes are. And predict where they'll hit. Is this why you do what you do? I'm studying meteorology is because of them. I don't want a family to go through what I did, especially I don't want an eight-year-old sister to lose their siblings. I don't want parents to lose their kids. And that's what fully motivates me to do what I do and keeps me going, honestly. Guided by loss, moving forward with purpose. For Eye on America, I'm Dave Malkoff in Moore, Oklahoma. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV, keeping on the topic of severe storms. This was News 9. There are storm trackers out in Oklahoma on Sunday, capturing a large tornado near Arnett, Oklahoma, doing some damage there on the ground as it scattered debris and dust. Yeah, wild seeing that one. That's I know there crazy. was a lot of tornadoes in Oklahoma, parts of Kansas. I was watching some of the tornadoes, uh, yeah. some of the video and actually uh, one tornado in Colorado crossing Interstate 70 was just wild. That actually could be seen from the uh, Dem Denver International Airport the other day on Sunday. Yeah, and I mean this video here, it, it shows uh, part of the reason why it's so hard for us to see tornadoes in our part of the country because we don't have a lot of spots where you can go out and you can get that much yeah. horizon just so flat. flat. No <laughs> No trees. Yep. I mean, that, that's the perfect spot to, to safely catch video of a tornado. And you don't really get that here in Ohio, but thankfully we don't also get those large tornadoes very often. Yeah, because I mean, you could see for miles, you could be in a safe location and be able to follow those tornadoes. I mean, many people have done it. You've seen videos like that and uh, are able to stay safe. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of tornadoes, check this out. A tornado that tore through parts of Kansas toppled about 100 cars on a Union Pacific train that was stopped at the time near Greensburg. Union Pacific said the derailment happened about 11 p.m. after the crew stopped the train due to those dangerous storms. The railroad confirmed that there were no injuries and no hazardous materials were released. Union Pacific confirmed that the cleanup is underway and it's going to take some time to clean up 100 plus cars. Yeah, I mean, there. you can kind of see that drone video there where you're just there's so many cars. Of course, you know, you're saying there's 100 cars that were toppled over. Yeah. And interesting to note about uh, Greensburg, of course, uh, the town devastated by a tornado back in 2007. So thankfully, this one just a little bit to the east and no one was hurt with that tornado. Yeah, definitely good news that no one was hurt there. And I mean, you got to think of the power to topple these locomotives because those things weigh hundreds of thousands yeah. of pounds. And they don't go very far, but yeah. the fact that you can even push them over is impressive. Yeah, definitely. And I remember seeing on social media somebody uh, making a kind of a comparison with the uh, Greensburg tornado from 2007, just the picture of it. And it was a pretty large tornado. It happened later on in the night where lightning was able to illuminate the look of the tornado. Mm -hmm. And it was a pretty large one, so not surprised to see how it toppled over those trains. But like I said, again, yeah. thankfully no one was injured. That's Absolutely. the good news. You know, the, the advice is always don't stay in your vehicle when a tornado comes. Maybe not the same advice for a train. They, they yeah. seem to be relatively safer <laughs> than anywhere else. Yeah. You, can you, you think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you got all that steel surrounding you. You're yeah. basically More in a weight. Little, yeah, More, storm yeah. shelter on wheels almost. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, thankfully, again, everyone was OK there. Yeah, definitely some good news. Absolutely. And, and speaking of weather and when we could see our next round of storms, we got some of them coming through today. And Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz, he'll be back later tonight to track any that remain as we head into the evening. And of course, detail your Memorial Day weekend. Until then, you can see more online, 10TV.com. Have a great afternoon.